Welcome to my channel, my fellow Moomin fan. In this video, we will get a grasp of how to draw rocks as in Tove Jensen's beautiful mountain landscapes. By the end of this study and tutorial, you will have the means to draw a rock and even a mountain the way Tove Jensen did. Before we start drawing, we have a couple of things to study. Let's go. A rock is sort of a box. The basic principle of light and shade. In Tove Jensen's work, we see a fondness of using black and white against each other, creating stark contrasts. Black tone versus white tone is the relationship that gives us a feeling of three dimensions. Tove Jensen achieves this effect by obeying some very basic rules about how light falls on objects. Say we have a box where the light comes from the left. This means shade on the right side of the box. All of a sudden we have a sense of where light comes from and therefore a much more convincing feeling that this is an actual box. The plane of white against the plane of black creates contrast which in turn means interest because our eyes prefer contrast over blandness. With that principle in mind, Let's take a look at this piece here, where we have the moomins placed up high at a fill. Can you tell which direction the light comes from? Yes, left side. Of course these small mountains are not boxes, but it's the same principle as with the box. I will illustrate this by breaking this landscape here into boxes to be able to understand it better. You can see how all the planes directed towards the light source are light, while planes turned away from the light source are all dark. What about the planes here and here? Why is there a tone here? Well, Tova tells us that these planes does not have direct sunlight. They are slanted more towards us as a viewer. So Tove uses a middle tone here, which is a tone between a dark and a white tone, and she also uses this tone to describe the shape of the fill. This is what we can call artistic liberty. This tells us that there is always room for experimenting and bending the rules when you know how they work. Soft caves and misty mountains. Tove Jensen's way of rendering. With our new knowledge, let's linger a bit more at the cave illustration. We almost physically feel the organic shape of the walls, turning and twisting in soft manners. Maybe you can even smell the salty sea. It feels nice, doesn't it? The reason for our tactile senses being activated is due to Tove Jensen's unique way of rendering. Rendering is a fancy word for the ways we in drawing describe planes. So, in other words, the quality of the line work, the direction of strokes, and so on. If we look closer into the line quality of Tove, a couple of things strike us. The strokes vary in length and are not straight. They still seem to be related though, and this is because they always refer to the shape of the object. In other words, her strokes follow the shapes of things. So, for instance, the rock in the lower left corner. We can see how the strokes go from being diagonal here, to then becoming more curved, following the round circumference of the rock. This makes the rock feel curved too. Likewise at the entrance of the cave, where we are told by Tove's strokes that this cave wall here is not a straight smooth surface, but bumpy and curved and with creases. This also adds interest to our eyes. From the enticing cave, we go to a more hostile environment in this piece here. It feels cold, it feels hostile, it's moist. Why? First of all, the mountains are pointy, making them look sharp. The clouds make it feel that we are high up in the sky. Now that we know something about line direction, take a closer look at the mountains. What direction do the strokes go? Upwards. Upwards movement makes things look high, going towards the sky, making the mountains feel very high. 
it's a different feeling if the strokes went in a horizontal direction, right? After this studying, I think it's time for us to try to draw a rock and even a mountain. As inspiration and also as a guidance, I have found a little rock and I encourage you to also find a rock if you want to try this out. Let's try and draw the outline. If I look at my rock, I can tell that there are possibilities for creating some nice contrasts as I have this plane on the side here, as well as this protruding part here. So I will have light hitting these planes. We also need some shade, of course, to create the contrast, but where? Easy, anywhere else on the rock, meaning these parts here. A small breakdown analysis of where to put my shade could look like this. I use straight strokes on most of the planes where nothing is happening, and then I use curved strokes to illustrate the curved features of my rock. As you can tell, I just use the rock as a guidance, I am not rule bound by it. In the same way, you can experiment with having your strokes going in all sorts of directions, and see what kind of effect you get. There's no mistakes to be made here, feel free to experiment. My rock drawing here could be a smaller rock, or it could be a larger rock. It's just a matter of scale, which you can use to your choosing. Let's try and draw a more sharp and distant looking mountain, as in the Misty Mountain example. Here I found another rock for inspiration. It's more sharp. Again, I start with an outline. Then I will do some fine little lines as we saw Tove did. This way I create a feeling of distance and mist. To show that it seems far away, I'm not using very much contrast. So maybe I should have done the outline a bit more subtle. But important here, my strokes go upwards to show that upwards movement that we just talked about. Let me show you one last thing. I use the rock again as the guide, only now I do a variation of the outline. Adding a pitch dark tone to the mountain gives another effect which you can also use. You can place it behind or in the front, making it look like it's far away or very close to you. This creates some depth in your illustration. Now you can go ahead and experiment with various rock types and relationships between dark and white in your tone. And before you know it, you will be able to stitch together a beautiful landscape reminiscent of Tove Jensen. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my other videos about Tove Jensen's illustrated universe, as well as the more than 100 videos I have made about drawing and illustration. Till next time, have fun drawing.